so good morning everyone and today we are going to start the volume journey so basically in last lectures we already completed the album exercise and uh, now the polyam journey the both are come from the same background like uh, the plant uh, reproduction manners what we are studying earlier so basically here they comes both under the asexual reproduction of plant as the same you can see in the case of uh, apomixis there is no need of the amphimixis process or you can say simply that there was no uh, sexual reproduction has been take place under the condition of amphimixis and apomixis process but now same a little more different process is come under the reproductive manner of the plants that is pollen growing so in our following lecture we have to study the meaning of polyembryony type of polyembryony and how this polyembryony happens in the various group of the gymnosperm so these three topic we will be cover under our following lecture so next if we talk about the introduction of polyembryony so this the phenomena is basically happens inside mostly the gymnosperm plants so or uh, you can even say gymnosperm are known for this kind of phenomena so what happened in the case of polyembryony that one ovule development is natural but if the process of ovule formation is more than one like a plant having multiple ovules inside them at that kind of uh, thing or at that phenomena we call them the polyembryony so basically this phenomena polyembryony it is not the phenomena just belong to plants but also there are several animals plant and other small microbes they are having this capacity to produce more than one embryo at a time so hence we can call this process because uh, as we we break this uh, term polyembryony means a multiple embryo so easily we can call them the polyembryony the thing uh, even there are some very striking examples here here yeah like uh, if we talk about the small animals like the parasitic hymenoptera they can give up to like 2000 embryo from one single zygote that is a huge you know this is a huge kind of polyembryony like we are just from just one single zygote what we are having here is like 2000 ovules so this is a uh, um, means you can say this is a very broad spectra under the polyembryony pattern like you are getting 2000 embryo from just single one zygote so like these cases uh, the number of the developing embryos when they are bigger in numbers they can be the model organism for the polyembryony process so in plants this phenomena that was first reported by the antony von leeuwenhoek in the 1798 so basically leeuwenhoek was the first scientist who discovered this phenomena in the plants and basically the fruit which he used to work on that was orange so the orange was the first fruit and of which the polyembryony process take place for the very first time and also in several other gymnosperm this phenomena is really very common and mostly that's why gymnospermic plant have a key point of introduction by having the polyembryony as a reproductive phase now let's see how the majority of uh, gymnosperm deal with the polyembryony so mostly what happen inside a plant in at the time of reproduction phase that there are the two phase under which plant have to be go through okay one is a sporophytic phase second one is a gametophytic stage so the sporophytic stage if we are talking about here so sporophytic stage when the plant is under the diploid phase means they are having the full chromosomes number so like all the characters are in present so that time we can call them that particular plant is a sporophytic phase of the plant but what happen at the time of normal plant life cycle they can go through to the reproductive phase and when they enter to the reproductive phase they will as called as a gametophytic phase because what happen at the gametophyte formation there is a meiosis division take place and because of meiosis there is a reduction division happen 
so at the time of reduction division uh, reduction division basically uh, make the chromosomes number half okay so as a sporophytic phase the plant have the, all the chromosomes number in them but at the time of uh, haploid stage or you can say the gametophyte stage of plant that plant having the half number of chromosomes in them so this half number of chromosome stage the gametophytic stage then will lead to the fertilization process and zygote form and after having a simple zygote that will be converted into the seed and we can develop that seed into a new plant this is a whole normal process plant go through when they are going through the reproductive phase but what happened at the time of poly embryonic so basically this uh, whole purpose you know having a one zygote and developing converting into the one seed that can be uh, you know that can be changed by the polyembryonic because at the time of polyembryonic process there will be a, a one zygote but they are having a multiple embryos in them but this is not a very guaranteed situation actually that uh, all the embryos which have been developed from that particular zygote all they get maturity or not okay some might have uh, developed into the seed but not all the embryo have capacity or luctuality to get converted into the seed formation so that's why they are having this stage which can be called as the multiple embryo stage so that's why we can call this process as polyembryonic so because they are having poly uh, multiple embryos in them but uh, this is not you can say that all the embryo have a chance to get converted into seed and that seed will be converted into the plant this can be rare next we will see here the types of polyembryony so if we talk about the types so basically on the basis of their process inside a body they can be two types induced polyembryony and spontaneous polyembryony so induced as uh, we can say that is a like a synthetic phase of polyembryony this is not happen naturally inside the plant okay we got a introduced you can say we got to introduce or we actually synthetically induce that particular kind of polyembryony into the plant so in a simpler language you can call them they are the artificial kind of polyembryony and secondly that the spontaneous one this is spontaneous one have a great uh, you can say adaptability process that's why they can easily present naturally in the plant we don't need to induce the polyembryony inside a plant this uh, phenomena of a spontaneous polyembryony this is basically present inside the plant as if not natural terms so here you can see on the basis of their presence we can uh, divide them into two parts induced one and the spontaneous one now we will see here but the weber that uh, classification that you just studied it is basically based on the what leone hug gave us but after some more research as the research happened by the time so the web had come into the 1914 action and told us that there are the three kind of the polyembryony which is very efficiently present in our nature so now if we see here the cleavage polyembryony simple polyembryony and rosic polyembryony so these are the very three identical kind of polyembryony which has been introduced by the weber and uh, basically this uh, phenomena of these their types they are very useful when we study the gymnosperms studies because all these three cleavage simple and rosette polyembryony they are uh, naturally present in the gymnosperm and also we can synthetically induce them so these three uh, do not have any measurement like they have to be induced or they are spontaneously present in the plant so but their plane of action works according to or you can say their plane of action classified them into the several groups so first you can see here the cleavage polyembryony so as the name suggests cleavage okay so this is a kind of breakdown like uh, something is breaking down here so if any zygote or you know any fertilized egg which is present inside a plant and if it get uh, you know uh, cleaved by some any condition there can be any process which can by they can be cleaved 
so because of this cleave they are uh, maybe uh, maybe they were having the multiple number of embryos or you can say there will be a diploid uh, situation like the you if the one fertilized egg get division converted into two two can be four four can to be eight this is rare to having this kind of multiplication but having the two embryos from a one fertilized egg due to process of cleavage is basically known as cleavage polyembryo second is a simple polyembryo this is a very natural kind of polyembryo uh, mostly present in the gonosperm so that uh, what happened in this kind of polyembryo that uh, actually this archegonia archegonia is a very you can say productive part of the female gametophyte so if the egg cell form that uh, egg cell formed by the archegonial development so what happen at the time of archegonial development there may be more than one egg cell can be developed or you can say there are more than one cell can get fertilized from the archegonia so if you are if that particular plant having more than one fertilized cell by the archegonia so maybe these all cell if they are developing into the embryo and by this kind of embryogeny which generate inside the plant is called as a simple polyembryony third one is here rosette polyembryony so the rosette polyembryony we talk about so in this uh, polyembryony the cells of the upper uh, you can say as a ovule structure there is a two end chalagel end and the micropyle end so if they uh, these rosette cell basically the additional cells so you can see here in some gymnosperm additional embryo developed from the rosette cells and this type of embryo polyembryony has been termed as a rosette polyembryony so basically you can say that any kind of additional cell which converted into the embryo via any process okay any process uh, really by the any additional cell which converted into the embryo so that kind of process is called as a rosette embryo or the phenomena is called the rosette embryo so the basically that embryo which have been developed from additional cell they are the rosette embryo and the whole phenomena thing of this rosette embryo formation this is called the rosette polyembryonic process so these are the three uh, polyembryony which uh, are given by us to the weber now this uh, we discuss that what kind of polyembryony can be present inside the plant now we will can take a look on uh, how these polyembryony basically uh, you know function in the gymnosperm so first you can see here the polyembryony in cycadics so if we talking about the cycadel so before we are going in the how the cycadel having the polyembryony process in them we have to be see like if we talking about the gymnosperm classification so basically there are the four groups which come under the gymnosperm and these all four group have a different affinity towards the polyembryony in them so first and very important the polyembryony cycadel why we are starting it with the cycadel because cycadels are the primitive kind of group or you can say these are the very primitive kind of gymnosperm and uh, if i tell you honestly that cycadels just do not have that kind of good polyembryony in them so that's why they are not very common uh, plants which show polyembryony there are very rare species of uh, cycadels so you can see there are very few genus of cycadels which uh, probably so, uh, show polyembryony in them and even the rao from 1964 also reported that only simple kind of polyembryony has been seen in the cycadel cell analysis and also some by via some adjacent archegonia development so this uh, simple kind of polyembryony that has been reported into very rare species of the cycadel but uh, you can see the other genuses of other species of cycadels they do not have a very wide variety of the polyembryony so uh polyembryony in the cycadel analysis that basically developed you can see here in uh, written material so that two adjacent archegonia of the same ovule in the species 
sometime develop independently into two embryo and also rarely into two cilia so basically there can be a two embryo and these two embryo can be developed into this two cilia that is a huge thing why because uh, development of embryo in the process of polyembryony that is a different thing but development of the seed from those embryo that is a huge thing so basically in psychedelia maybe polyembryony is not that often that it is in the other groups of the gymnosperm but they can have a functionality from it or you can say they are converting into the functional zone via the method of seedling so seedling it happens here so that is the main deal here so polyembryony can be work in a functional way in the psychedelics next here polyembryony also has been reported in the psychis rumphi okay rumphi is uh, the species or you can say the psychis rumphi is a very important species it has a major importance in the uh, order psychedelic and that reported by the sylvan thumbia in 1952 and they said that only one out of uh, several embryo which has been developed inside the psychis rumphi they remain only one embryo remains there and convert into the seed otherwise all the other embryos which have been developed by the process of uh, polyembryony they do not have that luck to convert into the seed so only some things so you can say only some embryo have a chance to convert it into the seed form you can see the diagram here it is very clear so this is a example of the simple kind of polyembryo so in the simple kind of polyembryo these cells they are adjacently present archegonial cell and they can be developed into the embryo formation and they have the potential and they have the capacity to move forward and work for the seedling process but in this cell you can see here these these are the rosette kind of polyembryo so these additional cell basically develop at the pin point of the embryo so these additional cell will also converted into the embryo but they don't have that much luck to convert into the seed only some cells have that capacity in a simple polyembryony or even the cells like the cycles uh, uh, cells that they have only the capacity to convert them into the seedling process otherwise most of the polyembryony process embryo form but uh, seed process cannot take place so next uh, if we talk about the second group of the gymnosperm and how polyembryony work in the conifers so if uh, we uh, just talk a little about conifers here so conifers you can say they having the wide capacity or they are having the mostly the forest area of northern uh, hemisphere that is made up by the conifers plant so conifers have a huge variety and also the polyembryonic process is very common inside the conifer so majority of the number or you can say majority of the species they deal with polyembryony in their reproductive manner now you can see also here like simple polyembryony occurs in majority of number of conifers and number of embryo varies from two to many okay the simple polyembryonic process this is very common inside the conifers and uh, number of embryo that also can vary the the minimum number of the embryo will be two and and it's certain up to the many embryo formation inside the plant cleavish polyembryony also has been reported in several genera of the pinaceae and other families but both simple and cleavish polyembryony are common in the cebespedes that is a very important genus of conifers so you can say in short that the conifers they are having the these both kind of the polyembryonic process in them simple polyembryony and uh, normally cleavish polyembryony but if we see here if, if like we are, we wanted to compare them the simple polyembryony and cleavish polyembryony and if we wanted to uh, seek out their ratio uh, believe me simple polyembryony is way more uh, common in the 
uh, cleavage volume your neon follicles because they are very example like uh, uh, if we taking the pinus example pinus is very useful plant of the um, uh, uh, division. so the basically their zygote if we are taking the example of the pinus so the zygote divides two times to form four nuclei so in the case of pinus what happened their zygote divides two times so uh, first time they will be converted into two cell after that there will be four cells uh, that have been formed so in the challenger end of the archegonium these four nuclei divides again to form two tire of four cells each so both tires divide one to form four tire from below of course these are four tires are called embryonal tires suspensor tire rosette tire and upper tire now what happened in this case the zygote is dividing and constitutive division that will lead to the four tires okay so first if we uh, take it from the below upwards condition then the four tires are called the embryonal tire so these embryonal tire they are basically responsible for the embryo formation the suspensor tire that whatever the embryo is forming there they need some kind of support there obviously they, if there is no support then they cannot develop so far so that's why these four tires or these embryonal cells they need some support so at that time these suspensor tire they give them the support meanwhile the rosette tire and upper tire rosette tire are also uh, they behave also like the embryonal uh, tires and they also made up some embryo from them. So having a multiple embryo formation condition in a pinus plant make them very relatable that how polyembryony can take place inside the gymnosome. Next you can see here the cell of the embryonal tire divide further into proximal secondary suspensor which is split apart and four distal embryo are formed. So the embryonal tire which we already know that they are responsible for the embryo formation that get a split. I think you will be understand it by the diagram. You can see here these embryonal suspensor okay so this embryonal suspensor that get a split or they will be converted into the to embryo formation. Meanwhile, this uh, embryonal cell they will be converted into the two cells. Meanwhile, the rosette cells, okay, this outer cells, ros one, two, and three. These are the rosette cells which also having the embryo formation there, additional embryo formation actually. So all these things which are making a multiple embryo condition in the pinus leads to the plant of the polyembryony and this type of polyembryony which happened by the split apart of the embryonal tire like in this process what happened the embryonal tire get splitted and form into the two embryo so via this process you can call them the cleavage type of embryogeny some species of minus also exhibit simple polyembryony so which result from the fertilization of several archegonia so you can see here the pinus having all the both kind of the polyembryonic process they are having the cleavage polyembryony and also they are having the simple kind of polyembryony inside them maybe simple kind of polyembryony that basically derived from the formation of additional archegonial cell and these archegonial cell and get fertilized and converted into them so these all process led to the plant to having the polyembryony inside them Next, we will see that how polyembryony happens inside the tax cells. So several archegonia are present in female gametophyte of tax cells. This is, these tax cells, they are also having very economic value inside the gymnosperm. And uh, for this uh, nature of giving the multiple embryo formation, make them useful. So the eggs of many of them may be fertilized resulting into the simple polyembryony. So in the condition of the female gametophyte of Texas, they are having a multiple number of the egg cells. And these all egg cells get fertilized and converted into the embryo. So by this process, this is kind of the simple embryony process. So all these embryos basically get the maturity, but only one 
after all these uh, embryo which get maturity one will be converted into the seed not all the embryo even they get the maturity but still they get the uh, disintegrated into the one another and only they let the development of one ovule converted into the seed now the suspensor here they separate from each other and each of them carry one and more embryonal units so sometime group of meristematic are observed at the base of the suspensor cell now till now in the tax cells the polyembryony happens via the simple polyembryony but what happens sometime when there are several kind of embryo are developing inside the tax cells plant so if the embryo are there and they are getting maturity so this is a meanwhile condition they are also having the suspensor them to provide them to base and support so at the uh, suspensor their bottom bottom of the suspensor there are some additional meristematic uh, cells present so what happened in the uh, additional meristematic cells they behave like the fertilized cells and after when they behaving like the fertilized cell and they are developing and converting into the embryo so at that time we call their polyembryony the rosette type of polyembryony so this rosette type of polyembryony is uh, you can say this is a second stage of the simple polyembryony in a taxil group so basically taxil group have both kind of polyembryony process they are having this simple polyembryony process and also they are having this rosette polyembryony process that basically come after the having the simple polyembryony process in the first stage next we will see the needles so basically needle is a very advanced group of gymnosperm all the advanced kind of plant come under the needle of the gymnosperm so you can see here Uh, we are taking the three example of needle plants one is needle itself that is a needles is a order and needle is a genus that come under the needles order second uh, order we are taking here or you can say the genus we are taking here is aphidera and third one is velvets these all three are very model plant for their groups so that's why we are taking all three plants and want to see that how polyembryony work in three cases so these all three having the polyembryony process but uh, you can say that aphidera uh, one of uh, all three the all of the apmanes out of all three the aphidera have the great capacity to having the polyembryony process in them and also the sneetum polyembryony is very high but means they are all having the polyembryony process uh, very well inside them but if we compare them the aphidera is good when then uh, neetum and then velvets yeah so in neetum what happened polyembryony is a very high order in this group not only the several prothelae in each seed and several zygot in each there is also the multiplication of embryo from each zygot by branching of the primary suspensor and further proliferation of secondary suspensor can occur what they wanted to say that if they are having the multiple embryo situation so this multiple embryo situation basically stop till the primary suspensor fall them okay they basically you can say they basically disintegrate they basically uh, divided it after having the first suspensor growth but in case of neetum they are having this growth of uh, multiple embryos till the formation of secondary suspensor so they are holding it for very long but in spite of all this like they are having this primary suspensor growth they are having this secondary suspensor growth they can do whatever they do to survival for their multiple embryogeny inside them but only one embryo normally reaches maturity in ac but still the same thing happen only one embryo get the chance at that will convert it into the seed there so there are many scientists like basil and madhulata from india and so also 1960 also reported some cases of polyembryony in neetamula and genema so they these are also very good uh, economic species of needle 
and the polyhedron also happen in this case so you can say uh, one more phenomena basically needham provide us that is a budding kind of polyhedron this is uh, you can say this is a little variant like budding process is basically when we are talking about budding process this is a vegetative kind of growth inside happen as sexual reproduction asexual reproduction so this vegetative growth in polyembryo this is a, a little uh, advanced kind you can say because needle are the advanced kind of plant so that's why they show this kind of uh, high level adaptations in their reproductive phase also so what happened here like uh, this is natural that they are having this secondary suspensor growth but if their secondary suspensor growth further cannot be you know mature into the seed but what they do they do a bulb like structure in them a bud like structure on them and after having enough nutrition that bud easily get detached from their parent plant and after detachment from their parent plant they converted into the new plant so this kind of phenomena in this a polyembryony embryo suspensor through the budding process generating into the new plant so basically this is all very uh, un unique you know you, you can see this is unique just for the needle only not any other group following this kind of pattern in in needle each of primary suspensor you develop an embryo and a tip resulting in the formation of many embryo in the embryonal mass at the tip of the embryo suspensor may enlarge or develop into the additional embryo so uh, sometime the like species of native genogram uh, this primary suspensor tube which form for giving the support and uh, nutrition for the embryo sometime what happen at their tip there can be multiple embryo can be formed by dividing the original one there will be a multiple embryo formation and the, all the embryo may be you can say that they will not convert into the seed but they are having a situation they are having a phase they are having a moment for development of the embryo at particular time now we see the case zygote device thrives resulting in the formation of eight product of which all or the capable of gives rise the embryo all the more commonly only 3 to 5 do so such precisely from polyembryony is remarkable now what happened in this case they are having the division and after having this division they are producing eight products or you can say whatever the eight products they are producing out of which almost 3 to 5 they have the capacity from one zygote okay notice it only one zygote firstly they are producing the eight products and after these eight products three to five have a capacity to generate the ovule so that's why this kind of precise polyembryony is remarkable in the case of the gymnosperm that's why i told you that aphidera is a one plant which show a very high efficiency of the polyembryony last one is velvetia so this is the third genus of needle and high degree of polyembryony is seen also in the velvetia many zygote are produced in this genus also and almost all start producing embryo but only one embryo develops at maturity in any one seed so the same thing happens with velvetia vel velvetia also that they are having the multiple zygote condition multiple zygote will be converted into the multiple embryo formation but they will only survive through the first suspensor is formed inside the and uh, when it come to the secondary suspensor formation or when it come to the development or conversion of the seed they can't get through that so that's why these whole polyembryonic process this is all about the embryo formation i am saying it again that don't uh, get confused with to producing the seed formation here okay it is not about the seed formation it is about the embryo formation there is no guarantee that if you are having the multiple embryo them uh, here in the plant 
but this is no guarantee that all the embryo which you find inside the plant will be converted into a seed or not. So that's why this is called polyembryony, not as uh, polyseedling process. This is embryo formation, like how we can make, uh, in a natural situation, there is only one embryo that can be formed. But if we are having a multiple embryo case formation in a single female plant, that's the we can call them the polyembryony process. So I think you all uh, have a understanding of how polyembryony works inside the mainly in the gymnosperm because gymnosperm are those phanerogam which have a very high degree of the polyembryony inside them otherwise all other plants they do not show that kind of polyembryony these are some following questions you can go through with these and i will also upload them on your lms you can go and take it there yeah, I think so that after having these all uh, tutorial, you will get that how to solve these very simple questions here. I think they very hard. There are some references also. You can go through them. These are not, uh, if you wanted to more information on them, just uh, click these links and you will go to the page and that will be more beneficial for you.